Africa's economic recovery was disrupted in 2022 by a range of internal and external shocks, including adverse weather conditions, rapidly rising inflation rates, higher borrowing costs, and softer demand in major export markets. Economies on the continent have struggled to make it through these circumstances. And Zimbabwe had a tough 2022, ending the year with inflation peaking at 280%, one of the highest rates globally. This led to plummeting living standards in the southern African country, where 7.9 million people, amounting to half of the population, fell into extreme poverty between 2011 and 2022. Zimbabwe's economic development continues to be hampered by a number of issues, including exchange rate instability, low investment, limited structural transformation, high inflation, multiple exchange rates, unsustainable debt levels, and the ineffective control of public spending. As the new year gradually takes shape, Zimbabwe's inflation is forecast to decline slightly, but stay in the triple digits. There are some positive projections, including real GDP growth growing to 3.6% in 2023 and 2024, supported by a better agricultural season and slowing inflation, as well as the relaxation of pandemic requirements. Joining me now from Harare, Zimbabwe, is Demford Mutashu, president of the Confederation of Zimbabwean Retailers. Demford, welcome to Business Edge again, and Happy New Year to you. Uh, thank you very much for having me, and uh, Happy New Year. So let's start looking at the currency, the Zim dollar, something particularly of interest to you and your organization. It ended 2022 week trading at about 930 to the U.S. dollar on the parallel market. And we've heard the IMF urge um, authorities to sustainably anchor macroeconomic stability through liberalization of the foreign exchange market to also stop printing money through quasi-fiscal operations and maintain a tight monetary policy and also wind down the use of the gold coins. And we spoke about the gold coins about two or three times last year. So in terms of what 2023 holds for the Zim dollar, where do you think we should be expecting it to go? I, I, I expect to see the tight monetary trajectory, which was adopted by government in the last quarter of 2022 to continue into the first half of 2023 uh, in order to arrange uh, rather to arrest inflationary pressures and uh, arrest uh, current uh, depreciation. Uh, you, you also understand that uh, key interest rates have uh, remained tight at 200%, uh, and uh, that move was uh, adopted in order uh, you know, to remove speculative uh, borrowing that was taking place in the economy. Uh, on the part of inflation, yes, uh, it has uh, you know, begun to slow down uh, of course, ending at December at 243.8%, uh, with the month on month uh, at 2.40%. Uh, uh, so, those, those are critical. If you look at currency stability, uh, inflation stability, exchange rate stability, those are the cornerstones that uh, must be managed by the uh, exchange rate authorities, uh, fiscal authorities, and monetary authorities in order. Uh, to bring about the economic growth that we anticipate. Yes, the economy stabilized the beginning of uh, October to end of, uh, or end of the year. But uh, what we believe as business is that stability is not enough without, uh, of course, uh, economic growth. And we need to begin to reignite economic growth. And when you are looking at our, uh, our economy, the growth drivers remain agriculture, mm -hmm. mining, manufacturing. And in mining, yes, we have seen a lot of uh, you know, you know, traction with uh, the discovery of lithium. Uh, that has added a lot of weight on uh, the already established uh, you know, minerals like gold and diamonds. Okay, so, and that ties me to what we see as the forecast being about 3.8%, and it says that uh, mining, construction, agriculture, and tourism, which are mainstays of Zimbabwe's economy, will likely be the main drivers of that. But I just quickly want to slide this in before I move on. In terms of the gold coins, which was one of the policy measures introduced in 2022 and had some relative success, do you think that's something that the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe should continue into 2023 against probably the advice of the IMF? I don't see authorities letting up on the on the gold coins because the net effect of the introduction of the gold coins was to move uh, excess Zim dollar liquidity on the market. Uh, and uh, I think uh, you, you you may also agree with me that uh, 
uh, after the introduction, uh, a lot of uh, businesses and individuals went for the gold coins, they purchased the gold coins, uh, and they're using them as a storage of value in something that, uh, that is quite predictable and stable. Uh, I, I see also uh, the continuation of uh, the dual currency uh, mechanism where the US dollar and the Zimbabwe dollar is going to continue. Uh, despite, of course, some shocks associated uh, with, uh, you know, global shocks and domestic shocks around the local currency. Uh, but I see an environment where, of course, the economy may continue to, uh, you know, to dollarize, just like it has been doing in the last half of 2022. And uh, also the growth of the informal sector is also indicating that it may also continue. Uh, we, we are working with government to ensure that there is uh, a, a bit of regularization and formalization of the economy to reduce the negative impact of a shadow economy. And remember, the government at this juncture requires more funds, especially as we head towards the you know elections, the elections in 2023. Mm. Okay, and it's good you bring up the elections now. In terms of how that might affect the overall economy and the economic possibilities that Zimbabwe holds for 2023, what do you think the elections could do? Because there's a lot of conversation as to what needs to happen in the elections, who's going to run, uh, who might be coming up against President Emerson Mnangagwa, as it may be, but also in terms of the sort of the policy and economic conversation around what Zimbabwe needs. So how do you think the elections could impact uh, the economy this year? I think the, the, the elections may impact on uh, you know, general pricing and uh, the intention by government, of course, also to reduce the poverty levels and uh, also to continuously support the productive sector like manufacturing so that the country continues to rely on locally manufactured commodities. Uh, however, we may see, just like uh, what has happened in the past, some uh, populist interventions, policy interventions, uh, that we may anticipate as the government you know, tries to, to arrest uh, the macroeconomic challenges that uh, the country has faced. And uh, one of the key issues that, uh, that is currently uh, affecting the economic viability of the country is the issue of power and energy supply. The issue of electricity, uh, of course, we, we, we currently on an 18-hour uh, load shedding uh, schedule, which, which uh, you know, as you may expect, it has affected uh, production and it has affected, uh, you know, general, you know, the citizenry in terms of uh, the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, power needs, in, uh, I mean, by the majority. So what, what we anticipate, of course, is government trying to come through and uh, reduce the impact of the power outages that are can, uh, currently favoring the economy. But in addition to that, uh, we may also see a, a little bit of increase in money supply into the economy as the expenditure toward the elections may also increase. And uh, in, in, in that regard, that may also even uh, you know, work to depreciate further uh, the Zimbabwe dollar. Okay, so let's talk debt now, Demford. With a budget deficit of 1.5% of GDP, a projected revenue of 3.2 trillion Zimbabwean dollars, and an expenditure of 3.4 trillion, the government is hoping for a GDP growth rate of 5% in 2023. Zimbabwe owes $13.5 billion to multilateral financial institutions, bilateral partners, and other creditors. And while the African Development Bank has agreed to champion the country's arrears clearance and debt resolution process, we know that the road ahead is going to be a long and tough one for Zimbabwe in terms of restructuring the debt and working around it. So what do you think the debt conversation is going to look like, or at least actions around Zimbabwe's debt in this year? I, I would like to believe that uh, you know areas clearance remains one of the major you know critical areas that government uh, is uh, chosen to focus on because it has got uh, uh, negative ramifications uh, across the globe and across uh, the external markets. So we have seen that uh, government is uh, also tried to clear the domestic debt, but what is critical is to clear the external areas and. Uh, there are ongoing negotiations with, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, international financial institutions in, in trying to restructure and reorganize, uh, you know, Zimbabwe's areas. And uh, we've seen a bit of traction, but I, I think what is required, uh, going by the, you know, 
commodity prices, global commodity prices, uh, and also a good agricultural season. I would like to believe that uh, more resources can be committed towards uh, uh, you know, areas of clearance. And we have seen that uh, those negotiations have also led to a bit of uh, deferments and extensions to try and give uh, space uh, to the to the fiscal to ensure that while uh, the focus is on uh, data uh, areas clearance, but so far uh, there is also greater need to pour more money and uh, more resources in the domestic. And we have seen the the infrastructure development that is currently uh, taking place with the, the Arare Bay Bridge Road, uh, 400 kilometers having been completed. Uh, I, I think that also is uh, another you know competition uh, for the resources, for the little resources that are pouring into the government focus. Mm. All right, Denford, before I let you go, we're seeing projections. Now, economists say triple-digit inflation and severe currency instability will continue to impact both businesses and consumers. And government is also setting a month-on-month -month inflation target of between 1% and 3% and a fiscal budget deficit of not more than 1.5% of GDP in 2023. How realistic do you think these targets or these goals are? And what would really need to happen for these targets to be met? I think what is what is required is uh, so far uh, instead of increasing taxation, government must expand the tax base, and by incorporating the informal sector, I think that will also you know ensure that government is with more resources that are deployed towards uh, you know towards meeting some of those uh, those objectives. If you look at the structure of the economy right now, uh, more than 60 percent is informal, and uh, yes, the two percent IMTT tax was introduced. Just like the 4% uh, on uh, foreign, uh, domestic uh, foreign transactions before it was reduced during the just ended budget uh, to 2%. But uh, that, that is, uh, a, of course, a way of trying to bring on board the informal sector and everyone to contribute towards the accession. But there is still quite a huge uh, number of businesses that are continuing to operate outside the law that do not remit the, even the VAT, the 15% VAT. So that, that remains a very critical challenge. So if government wishes to harness more resources, I think it is good also to pay more attention towards restructuring the whole economy and reduce uh, the growing shadow economy. All right, Denford Mutashu, we'll continue to have these conversations. Many of us are pulling for uh, Zimbabwe to work itself through these issues and, of course, also uh, find a way around some of these conversations it's having. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Good day. All right. And Zimbabwe had a very, very tough 2022, but there is some potential for positive growth in 2023. But there are conditions that must be met and there are actions that must also be taken. Can Zimbabwe find itself at the end of a golden road or a brighter day before the end of the year? We'll be keeping our eyes on this conversation because right here on Business Edge, it's African finance, the economy and business that takes front and center conversation stage. And that's today's show, of course, wrapping up this week as well. If you've missed any of our conversations, head to our YouTube channel. Head to, of course, our mobile app, which you can download on the Apple Play Store and the Google uh, App Store as well. You can also go to our website. That's www.newcentral.africa. And you can also, of course, follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV.